Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The Lord said, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me and I will answer you and I will lead back your captives from every place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always, and also with you. Good morning, I'm Father Jerry Gondringer. I'm a retired priest from uh, Divine Mercy Parish. Uh, I was a deacon. Uh, when I was a deacon in 19... Uh, uh, 73, I was with Father Joe, who was an assistant at Hardington, so we go back quite a few years. My greetings to the people of St. Isidore's Parish. Uh, please remember Father Joe and your three deacons in your prayers as they are recovering from the COVID virus. I welcome also the people from Divine Mercy Parish who are not able to go to church. Um, I'm using electronic means, uh, trying to, I'm using my own chalice, wine, water, vestments, everything to uh, make sure to stop the spread of the virus. I'm using electronic means because we can sanitize this. I, I don't know how to sanitize books. We come before the Lord today, uh, aware of our sinfulness. We ask his mercy and plead forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, my thoughts and my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve you with constancy, the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. 
She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be in favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are they who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the letter of, of first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Continuing times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for this day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of the dar or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me bears much fruit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability, and then he went away. Immediately the one who had received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. The master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I know you were a demanding person harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. You knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten. 
For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you were building a prison to keep people in and wanted it to be very strong, what would you use for the bars? In Europe, they use Swedish steel. In fact, the slang for jail in German is being in a Swedish garden, a Swedish garden. Would you use iron, steel, or bronze? Where would you put this maximum security jail? On an island like Alcatraz? You know, if I were building a jail, I would use fear. Fear makes such a strong jail that you can put it anywhere, even in a church. Do you realize that the most common phrase in the Old and New Testaments is not love your neighbor or serve God? The most common phrase used in the scriptures is do not be afraid. Fear or afraid is used over 350 times in the Old and New Testament. It seems like uh, every where when there is an encounter between God and man or an angel and man, there is fear. The Bible starts with Adam hiding from God because he is afraid. The angel tells Hagar and Ishmael not to be afraid. When God appears to Abraham, he says, do not be afraid. Gabriel tells Mary not to fear, tells Joseph in a dream not to be afraid. When Jesus is walking on water, he tells his disciples, do not be afraid, it is I. The first thing after the resurrection when Jesus appears in the locked house is, do not be afraid. Most of uh, these passages in scripture that deal with fear, deal with it in relationship to God. One of the first phrases of Pope St. John Paul II was, do not be afraid. He repeated it over and over again as Pope. He understood that fear makes a strong jail. We do not need steel bars to restrain us. Fear can restrain us much more effectively than bars. Often that fear stretches back into our childhood. When they are training an elephant, they start with the baby. They tie one of its feet with a heavy rope to a stake. The baby elephant tries, of course, to break free, but it cannot. After a while, it no longer tries. Even later, as an 11,000-pound adult, it can still be fenced in by a rope to its leg tied to a stake. An adult elephant could very easily pull the stake out of the earth. But it remembers its failure as a child and will not try again to break free. It is afraid to try again. Remember the story of the fairy tale of Rapunzel with the long hair? She's trapped in the tower because she's been told she's ugly. It is that fear that binds her. You know, the gospel of talents that we have today is about fear. The gospel is about a master who gives his servants five, two, and one talent to invest in his absence. A talent was about 75 to 90 pounds of silver it was equal to 20 years of wages. It's a huge amount of money. Servants are told to invest it. We are familiar with the story. The one makes five more, the other makes two more. 
And the servant with one hides the money and gives it back to the master with no growth because he was afraid. He was afraid to risk. I am more and more convinced that fear is the greatest prison. It keeps us from growing. Although I guess in the midst of a pandemic, I should say some positive things about fear. There are reasonable and unreasonable fears. We are to take reasonable precautions and have a reasonable fear of the pandemic. I am 72 and nearly, uh, nearly uh, did not survive cancer 11 years ago. So I'm very cautious about the virus. My emotional equilibrium was upset a bit last week on Thursday when I found out that the deacons of my last three masses here turned out positive for COVID. I had my test this week and I have no symptoms so I am anticipating that the result will be negative. It is not reasonable not to have a fear of the virus. Even with precautions, we can fall victim to it. But I'm not talking today about reasonable fear that preserves our safety. I'm talking about unreasonable fears. We are a bit like the elephant. Once we have experienced failure in an area, we are afraid to try again. If we've been deeply hurt by someone, we are afraid to be vulnerable again. But you know, life is a series of picking ourselves up after failure and trying again. Do you realize that in inventing the light bulb, Thomas Edison had 2,772 failures before he had success? We don't remember the failures, we remember the success. We know the number because he kept a very detailed journey, journal of all the things that he had tried. You know, the one common thread among successful people is they have all failed at one time or another. Great actors or successful entrepreneurs or inventors have all experienced deep, numbing failures. What's your reaction when I say we are called to holiness? We're kind of like the baby elephant and we say, hey, I tried that too often and I can't do it. I surrendered my desire to be a saint. Now I'm happy if I just avoid the big things and do a few good deeds now and then. That's what we say to ourselves. Not only are we afraid of failure, we are afraid of intimacy with God. In the Old Testament, you find the phrase, who can see the face of God and live? Omaha, uh, uh, Moses was terrified to look upon the face of God. We could adjust that saying and say, who can see the face of God and live comfortably? I really believe that the reason we have problems with our prayers is not because prayer is such a difficult process. You know, think about it. God loves us. He wants a relationship with us. Why would he make the avenue to that relationship prayer a difficult thing that only a few could master? I think if we try to pray in whatever way, God will find a way to touch our hearts. Uh, Prayer is difficult uh, because we are not really sure that we really want to pray and know God's will. It's a lot more comfortable, you know, if we don't know. Ignorance is bliss, you know, and so sometimes that's the source of our happiness and our fear. I'm convinced that fear really does affect and limit our lives. I think the greatest shock when we die will be to stand next to God and look at our whole life and see it in terms of what God had planned for us and what we could have done 
if we had more faith and less fear. The strongest jail is not made with Swedish steel or placed on Alcatraz. The strongest jail is the human heart that fears. That's the strongest jail in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come now before the Lord with our prayers and our petitions knowing of God's great mercy and compassion. We pray first of all for all the sick. We pray especially for Father Joe and the three deacons of the parish here that are uh, sick with COVID, that God may bring them back to the fullness of health. We pray for all those who have COVID and are struggling to regain their health. We pray for all those with cancer or heart or any other sort of a dangerous disease. We pray that God give them a fullness of health and return them to service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the ability to risk. God will conquer our fear. That the phrase, do not fear, do not be afraid, uh, after the resurrection will touch our hearts and give us the ability to take risks for the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for uh, all the, the con conquest of the coronavirus. We pray for our researchers. We pray for our medical staff uh, and all the, and throughout the nation. We pray for emergency workers police and armed uh, services who are helping in any way. We help, we pray for all those involved in ministering to our health during this time. We also pray for ourselves that God gives us the, the charity and the desire to serve the common good, that we may uh, practice the hygiene of health that will diminish this uh, virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the consolation of those who have lost family members and loved ones through the virus. We pray for them uh, as we near, I think it's close to a quarter million people who have died because of the virus. We have over 10 million people who've been infected Yesterday, I think there were 130,000 new infections. We pray for uh, God's mercy and compassion that through his help we may eliminate this scourge. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, we pray for peace and tranquility in our church, 
and in our nation. We pray for uh, peace and tranquility between Democrats and Republicans. We pray for all of us that we may honor the uh, intention of the voters. We pray for the winners in the election that they might be magnanimous. We pray for the losers that they might be accepting and in their di uh, disappointment still serve the common good. We pray for all those who search and hunger for justice. We pray that we might uh, build a society in which the dignity of each individual person is respected and where all persons have uh, uh, access to the uh, means they need for success. We pray for our society, for our culture. We pray also that our culture is more op open to the value of human life and the dignity of each person. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we offer up to the Lord our own desires in our heart, our own needs. St. Teresa reminds us that the goal of holiness and sanctity and spirituality is that our heart be like the Lord's heart. And so as we offer our heart to the Lord, we pray that he change and transform it, make it like his own. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For religious freedom throughout the world, that people of, uh, that the rights of conscience may be protected by all governments and nations and cultures, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, with your Son in the Holy Spirit, we present these prayers knowing your love and compassion. Although we do not understand always the ways of your providence, give us faith to accept your holy will. We ask this, Father, through your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Oh, and I forgot to mention the intention of this Mass is the people of the parish. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the prayer, a sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, 
the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you alone are great. You have fashioned all your works in wisdom and love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he has lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, but you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward towards salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, you shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits to those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, May this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his return, his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the, glory, to the praise of your glory. 
Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer the sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose fate you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of peace. May God's peace be with you and your family and your loved ones. May he watch over us all in this time of need. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us recite the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
During this time of pandemic, I've also been adding at my private masses the prayer of abandonment by Charles de Foucault. One of the most difficult prayers that I've ever run across. Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I'm ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish no more than this, O Lord. Into your hands I commend my soul. I offer to you with all the love of my heart. For I love you, Lord. And so need to give myself to surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with boundless confidence, for you are my Father. The communion Anaphon. To be near God is my happiness, to place my hope in God the Lord. In Columbus and Schuyler this weekend, there will be no confessions in any of the parishes due to the coronavirus. Uh, there will be no live masses this weekend at St. Isidore's Parish. Uh, please be careful. Uh, please wear your masks uh, when you're around other people. I, I think that's the only reason uh, that I'm still healthy. When I came here to say Mass Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I kept my mask on at all times. Uh, when I came in the, the door, I had my mask on at all times except when I received communion. I think uh, the masks are very important. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you to protect you. May he go before you to guide you. May he stand above you to give you strength. May he look upon you to keep you and bless you. And may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Uh, thanks uh, for uh, participating in this Mass and joining in prayer. Uh, please remember Father Joe and the three deacons in your prayer and for all, all those who are suffering from the COVID virus. Uh, May God bring them all back to fullness of health. Uh, please be careful, uh, and God bless you. Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors.